Oh my. I was just reading an article. 20 of the most overrated USA tourist attractions that are a waste of time. That title right there is going to get some people up in arms. Let's go through this. Hi, I'm Arnie. And here we talk travel, accessories, and camera gear. If you're into any of that, why don't you consider subscribing? Just click that big red subscribe button down below. Then click the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever we put up new content. And then check out the show notes for even more information. So here they are, 20 of the most attractions that are a total waste of time. Number 20, getting up close to the Statue of Liberty. Don't. It's overcrowded. You got long lines, a lackluster view. A better thing to do, according to the article, because I've not been, is to. Um, See this, the statue from Bat Staten Island Ferry. You can see, get a good view of it, and you're not stuck in the long lines. Number 19, avoid being over, excuse me, avoid being underwhelmed by Mount Rushmore. I went to Mount Rushmore back in the mid-70s, or tried to go, be more accurate. When we got there, we found that it was a huge hike from the parking lot. The parking lots were packed, and there were crowds. We decided not to do it. And that's what this article is saying, too. You're going to the middle of nowhere, and it kind of is, you know, kind of depressing. <laughs> it's too bad, because actually, you know, it does memorialize some of our most famous presidents, but oh well. By the way, if you're going to South Dakota, Black Hills, we have a friend who goes there regularly, says it's fabulously gorgeous, so go there instead. Number 18, the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, disappointing school children for more than 200 years. Now, I was there when I was a kid. And I will agree that it was disappointing. Uh, you know, from everything that you kind of get in, in school, you expect it to be this um, imposing and impressive entity. Well, it's pretty small. And, uh, you know, I mean, it certainly means to, a lot to us historical, but historically, but to go and see it, yeah. Number 17, the Hollywood sign. Seriously? Do people actually go to see that? I mean, it's just... Yeah, it's terrible. I just can't even imagine it. And besides, it's illegal to get up close to it. So why even bother? Number 16 is the Quincy Market in Boston. And um, it's de designated a National Historic Landmark. And it's pretty significant as one of the largest market complexes in the U.S. in the first part of the 19th century. But nowadays, it's nothing more than a mediocre food court selling tacky souvenirs. And the locals steer away from it. Number 15, Times Square. What's the, the fuss about? Times Square. Now, this is another one of those things I, I just don't get why people go. It's, you know, packed with tourists. It's um, gridlock traffic, flashing lights, chain restaurants with hugely long waiting times. I, I mean, I don't get it. Number 14, one that's kind of close to home. Seattle tourist trap, the Space Needle. You get some interesting views from up there. It's, you know, pretty expensive. Um, but seriously, if you want a great view of Seattle, you need to go to Cary Park, which is on Queen Anne Hill. It's a super, super view um, and doesn't cost you anything.
Number 13. Oh, by the way, if you do go to the Space Needle, go up and go to the restaurant. You get the view and you can have a pretty decent meal, too. Uh, number 13. The Mall of America in Minnesota. Ultimately, it's just a mall. You know, it might have, uh, you know, rides inside, touristy kinds of attractions, but really, if you're going to visit a place, are you going to go to a mall? I, it just boggles the mind. Number 12, Hollywood's Walk of, not fame, but Walk of Lame. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, this is interesting. There's a reason Hollywood's Chamber of Commerce decided to put stars bearing the names of stars on either side of this particular stretch of Hollywood Boulevard because there is literally no other reason for you to go there. That's how boring this spot is. That's another one of those things I just don't get, but I will. Number 11. Now, this is one that's kind of surprising in a way, I guess. It sounds cooler than it is. The Four Corners. Now, you probably are aware that um, the Four Corners is where New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, and Utah all come together. And that's why they've you know, made this monument. And it's very popular. Um, thing is, it's in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing else around. And where the monument is, is 1,800 feet away from where the actual states meet one another. That's pretty lame, as the article says. Waste of time. Number 10. Your trip to New Orleans deserves better than Bourbon Street. New Orleans is one of those, you know, beautiful historic towns. It's filled with amazing food and drink, world-class jazz, it really does ooze charm and culture, except Bourbon Street, that is. Come on, it's, you know, it's, as the article says, it's, it's got a Cancun spring break vibe, but not in a good way. Tacky bars, overpriced drinks. No. Nope. Cut out Bourbon Street, go to Jackson Square, St. Louis Cathedral, Louisiana State Museum, and the famous City Hall instead. Number nine, the Washington Monument is boring. There, we said it according to the article. It's just not a lot of fun. Take a 70 second elevator ride to the top and you get to compete with everybody else trying to peer out of one of eight little windows. Certainly is, you know, one of those things that if you're going to go see it through the reflecting pond, it's an impressive sight. But do you really need to go up it? Nah. Okay, number eight. Let's go to the other coast. Number eight, Lombard Street is great if you love gridlock traffic. Yeah. 600 yard long brick street in San Francisco is a great idea if you love being stuck in traffic. It can only go about five miles an hour. You know, it's got an endless line of cars. One every 10 seconds or so can go down it. Please. If you want to go there, walk it. Don't drive it because it is a beautiful street. You have great views of North Beach and Coit Tower. Anyway, it's not worth driving to. Number seven, run down and dirty, the Santa Monica Pier. We were there about a year ago, February, I guess it was. And it wasn't impressive. It wasn't overcrowded because it was February. And, uh, but it really wasn't very appealing either. Plus, the water around the pier is some of the most contaminated in the state. So worth passing by. Number six, Waikiki Beach is not the real Hawaii. And I don't think anybody in their right mind would say that it's the real Hawaii. I mean, it's, you know, lined with hotels and, 
expensive stores and chain restaurants. <coughs> it's for the tourists. Let me get something to drink here real quickly. I'm running out of spit. So, get away from Waikiki. And I don't even think you have to have been there to understand that. Number five, over-commercialized and overpriced Beale Street in Memphis. Memphis is a, you know, place where music lovers go. But Beale Street now has apparently become uh, nothing more than a strip of corporate bars hopping, you know, to, to cash in on your drinking. Apparently, it's not the real thing. You know, it's one thing to have dive bars that are local and, you know, but to, to go to where some corporation is doing that. Pfft. So forget that. Apparently, you should go to Overton Square and the Cooper Young areas for a more authentic experience. Number four, it's rubbish for selfies. The Empire State Building. It's crowded, touristy, ticket prices are high, and once you get up there, there's metal bars all around, you feel cramped, <laughs> probably feels a lot like being in jail. And a better yet is to go to the um, top of the rock at Rockefeller Center. You actually get some great views and you get to see um, Empire State Building that way, kind of like when you go to Paris. If you, uh, you know, don't go, don't go up in the uh, Eiffel Tower, go to the Montparnasse Tower and go up. That way you get all of Paris and you get to see the Eiffel Tower. Much nicer. Number three, Big Whoop, it's the White House. I told you there's going to be some controversial stuff here for some of you guys. You've seen it on TV, you've seen it in the movies, you know the most powerful man in the world lives there, in quotes. And you've probably been led to believe that you've got to see it, but it's not particularly remarkable to look at. You can take a tour inside, which is a lot more fun. Um, all in all, again, according to the article, I'm not telling you whether to go or not. It's kind of uh, disappointing. Number two, Plymouth Rock. It's just a rock. Supposedly, this is where the pilgrims landed. There's no historical evidence of that. And when you get there, you're going to be standing around with a bunch of other people looking down to this pit at this big rock stuck in the sand. It is just a rock. And number one on this list, and I don't know if was, this is supposed to be the, the first most disappointing place or not, but it's in Vegas, so it has to be. The Venetian gondolas in Vegas are not as romantic as they sound. You know, obviously, Vegas is one huge tourist trap. There's just no denying it. And so this is, could possibly be the most tourist trappy of the tourist traps. Um, they're just a total waste of time. And again, remember, I'm reading the article here, so I'm not making, you know, I'm not writing it. Um, you know, you float on this gondola in a chlorinated blue pool and it's about, it's less than 15 minutes and you're, you know, surrounded by gamblers and intoxicated party goers. And if you do it for the two of you, it's going to set you back $116. Does not sound like fun to me. There you have it. If you like this kind of content, give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. We're really interested in hearing what you've got to say. And subscribe. Click that bell notification so you'll be notified whenever we put up new stuff. Thanks for stopping by. We do appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Thanks.